When they're not battling the flames, they're digging out fire hydrants. They're shoveling all the 5,700 hydrants throughout the city of Syracuse. It takes us a little bit of time. We've been shoveling them out, but it's an endless battle. We wanted to see what crews have to deal with on a daily basis in the dead of the winter. For the past few weeks, crews have been on the hunt to find the hydrants that have been buried underneath mounds of snow. So we drove around looking for any spots of red in the piles. To our surprise, we found plenty of hydrants barely visible. If you look for an accessible hydrant, make sure I've got enough room to fit through. With shovels in hand, fire crews start to dig out. Even though you can see the hydrants, doesn't mean that gets the job done. In order for crews to successfully get the hose connected, they need to clear a three-foot path around the hydrant. Go! While it only takes a matter of minutes to clear the snow, every second they're shoveling is time lost. The fire can double in size every minute, so, you know, that's important to get the water on the fire as quick as we can. That's why the fire department is urging neighbors and business owners to lend them a hand. All they're asking is for you to grab a shovel and make a path. To be honest, it's not something we, uh, I gave much thought to. You know, I suppose if, uh, if uh, homeowners were asked to do it, they might uh, actually consider doing that. You know, we just don't uh, <laughs> typically think about that. If it was their home, you know, that's the way they'd want to, you know, they want the fire department to be there promptly and be able to put water on the fire, and they should think about their neighbors with the same concerns. For now, crews will continue to scout out the hydrants in hopes people will start to pitch in until warmer weather melts away the snow. What's it like for you to come back to Syracuse? You know, you have, you have some roots here going back a few years. What's it like? You love it? I love coming back. I love, love, love being on campus. I get that flip in my heart and I get excited. What do you see in these students? You know, you talk about that flip in your heart. What's that mean? Possibility. The flip in the heart when I arrive on campus makes me uh, excited to see in their eyes that they have hope and they have dreams to happen and they have uh, goals to achieve. And it's nice to be a part of that again. <coughs> standardized testing where we explore school uniforms and conformity in dress. Emmy is back on the hill to judge student designs at the annual Fashion and Beauty Communications Milestone Fashion Show. Syracuse University, fashion without limits, was birthed out of many, many years of trying to change a system one particular way and going against that door and knocking and knocking and knocking without the door opening. Emmy is working to open those doors. The finale of the show included models wearing the designs from fashion without limits. Even just being in this space here, which is so unique and seeing these young faces and they're immersed in their patterns and designs, it, it's energizing. It's very energizing to see the students working with the patterns, their ideas becoming a reality. And that's the best part of creativity, is to say, yes, it is possible. You just have to think it, and it can become. And this is what happens at, you know, VPA. This is what VPA is all about. The fashion design program at the warehouse in Armory Square now has the benefit of designing on forms that are not the industry standard of size 6. Whether she's size 0 or whether she's size 24, 22, 18, we want to include all women in the fashion quotient. And I think it's extremely possible here at Syracuse University. It seems impossible to me that that has not been considered before. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I mean, we've had all sizes of women forever. <laughs> Right? I know. This is not a new invention. Fashion is not exclusive. It's been told to us that it's an exclusive club, that only a few are let in and a few will look fashionable. Well, we want to kind of turn that over and create a tipping point and, and include women in the fashion concept, idea, uh, excitement, uh, party, the fashion party. Everyone should be involved. There's a conservative woman, there's a grunge woman, there's a rocking chick woman, there's a woman that likes to have, you know, a little bit more of that clean aesthetic. Well, that should be reflected in full figured as well. Not one boxy size or fit for all. No more, no more. We don't want that any longer. 16, 
18, 20, this represents 100 million women, these three forms right here. While Emmy works on her clothing line, her writing, and raising her 13-year-old daughter, she also preaches the importance of physicality. She wants people to get out and move. She treasures life after surviving Hodgkin's. I haven't been challenged with cancer. I hold on a little tighter to this existence here. I don't want to have anything premature pop up and I got out too early. I need nine lives already. Yeah. You know, I, w I want all, all that comes to me. And so taking care of my body is just going to help me get to be nicely old and gray. <laughs> I can't imagine it. Oh, yeah. Well, gonna, I hope so. You're not going to be old and gray. Oh, okay. Forever young. They're, actually, they're just going to put you in the, the mannequin <laughs> right back in the room. Oh, no. And you come out again and you, and you look that way again. Oh, right? no. Isn't that how it works? This African crow works hard for Syracuse's zoo. Twice a day, she performs in a bird show. And her reward, a cooling mist. They love that uh, any time of the year, most really, um, but in, on particular days that are really sunny and hot. When it's sunny and hot, like today, the zoo takes extra precautions for all its animals and makes it fun. Grizzly bears. Just like we humans like ice treats, Heavy-coated animals like these bears enjoy their frozen fruit salad. And the waterfowl get their share, too. I'm giving them ice treats, uh, which is some of their favorite food items, and icicles that we freeze in our walk-in freezer. One of the things you'll see a lot of here at the zoo is misters. They're in many of the animal enclosures, and they figure if it's good for the animals, why not the people, too? So if you might be watching the white-lipped deer or the bison enjoy the misters that are, that are uh, blowing into their exhibit and, and getting wet. So we have them on the public walkway just adjacent to that. So the kids can run under there and get wet as well. The zoo's summer camps also take special precautions. So games take on a wet look and feel. Oh, 65. And from young to old, more concerns about the heat. At the Salvation Army's Senior Center, these people are coping by staying inside where it's cool and relaxing and getting plenty to drink. Hydration is the most important thing. And what's more important is that people in our community should look out for older adults and make sure, check on them twice a day and make sure they're drinking and they're also staying out of the heat. Good advice on this hot day and for the hot days to come. In Syracuse, Laura Hand reporting. You know, we got two roller coasters. We got the wheel. We already started the wheel. I was up inside the zipper over here. I already climbed up through the tower today. John Dodson knows amusement rides. When I started back in 1985, 86. He makes a living traveling all across the country, going to different fairs and theme parks. We like to think that we're pretty proficient in what we do. So is his job just to go enjoy a bunch of rides? Yes, but there's a little more to it. So what we look for are the attachment points. John gets up close and personal with the rides. So if I need to go up underneath something. He even gets underneath, all to guarantee your safety. We want people to be able to come enjoy themselves and then go home happier. As a safety consultant for many theme parks, John checks everything from where you walk to where your head rests. Making sure that we can't pull these out of the sockets. And with 70 plus rides expected at this year's fair, he's quite busy. The public wants bigger and better and faster and higher and everything else. And as safety consultants, we have to be able to keep up on new technologies that come out. Now, although most of the work for John and his team takes place way before the first flight in terms of the cliffhanger here leaves the ground, his team is going to be here for the entire length of the fair to make sure everything stays safe. Now, this does release, right? John? John? We do pre-opening inspections on a few rides each day. But he also keeps his eye on the ride operators. Make sure that they're hydrated. And focused. We don't let anyone use cell phones when they're operating amusement rides. All so you can rest easy and have a good time. Something John loves to see. I get to be out here, I get to meet different people. At the state fairground. That makes the job interesting. I'm Brett Hall.